Well, local election season, it's here. Today we're going to dig into everything you need to know to make sure your vote is heard. There are races in several of our triad counties. In Guilford County, for example, you can vote for your city council members in High Point and Jamestown if you live in those areas. Plus, High Point residents can vote for a new mayor as well. Current Mayor Jay Wagner decided not to run for re-election. Remember that early voting runs uh, through uh, October 7th, three days before Election Day, October the 10th. Right now, the only location in Guilford County to vote early is Washington Terrace Park in High Point. Two more spots open up on Friday, one at Deep River Recreation Center on Ski Club Road and a Greensboro location at Old Courthouse on the Old Courthouse on West Market Street. Now, new North Carolina rules require photo IDs for voters. There are plenty of options to make sure that you can vote. So let's take a look at the long list of different things that you can bring. You can use your North Carolina driver's license, a state ID, a driver's license from another state if you've moved here in the last 90 days, a U.S. passport or passport card, a military or veteran ID card, a college or university student ID approved by the State Board of Elections, or a North Carolina voter ID card. You can get one of those for free from the Board of Elections. Now, there are some exceptions, of course. The North Carolina State of Elections made this video to explain. Voters who have a religious objection to being photographed were victims of a natural disaster within 100 days of the election, as declared by the President of the United States or the Governor of North Carolina, or have a reasonable impediment preventing them from showing a photo ID, can complete an ID exception form and vote provisionally. If you do go to vote without a photo ID and don't meet any of those exceptions, you'll get a provisional ballot. Then you'll have to bring a valid ID to the County Board of Elections office. Now, making sure your vote is secure is on top of mind for this election year and, of course, next year's presidential election. There will be increased security for the voting machines. It's created a little bit of a confusion, so we've decided to verify. Ballot security is a major issue among voters. Elections officials have recently taken steps to strengthen that security, but some of those steps have created confusion. Verify viewer Mark texted us to ask whether rumors that zero voting machines will be certified by Election Day in 2024 are true. So, Mark, let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, the Help America Vote Act, and the National Association of State Election Directors. Voting machines can be certified by a federal agency called the Election Assistance Commission. However, certification isn't required by federal law. States control the vast majority of election laws, even for presidential races. Many states require their voting machines to be certified by the EAC, but some don't. To be certified by the EAC, machines have to meet a set of standards called the Voluntary Voting System Guidelines and be approved by special testing labs. In recent years, the EAC has developed updated guidelines, primarily related to cybersecurity. That update appears to be the cause of the confusion. Starting November 15th of this year, all new voting machines have to meet the updated guidelines in order to get certified. But that doesn't mean machines approved under earlier guidelines are no longer certified. Any previously approved machines remain certified unless they are explicitly decertified. So we can verify, no, it's not true that zero voting machines in the US will be certified before the next presidential election. Every state, even those that don't require EAC certification, has a procedure of its own for certifying or approving voting machines. Some even require additional testing beyond what the EAC does. And all states, regardless of their laws, are required to follow a few baseline federal regulations established in 2002, which mostly deal with basic machine functionality. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Remember, you can also vote by mail if you need to. You still need to include a copy of a photo ID with your mail-in ballot. You can go online to request an absentee by mail ballot. Well, with elections coming up, you might get one of these in the mail. It is a voting report card from the Voter Participation Center. They are a nonprofit organization that works to increase voting among younger people. Now, getting one of these in the mail have led some people to wonder if their voting registration information is public. Well, in North Carolina and most states, it absolutely is. The information is available online, but there's only so much information. It's mostly there so candidates can reach their target audience. However, who you vote for is always private. 
The House of Representatives, of course, continuing to debate on four of the 12 appropriation bills needed to fund the government. But their work won't be done in time to avoid a government shutdown, which looks more and more likely. Skylar Henry has more details from Capitol Hill. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he needs more time to pass the 12 spending bills needed to fund the government. So he's pushing for a short-term continuing resolution that would temporarily avoid a government shutdown. We will pass a continuing resolution, bring that rule up hopefully on Friday, that uh, would keep government open, but at the same time deal with the border. But some hardline Republicans say they will oppose any CR even if it means a government shutdown. I'm a no and will remain a no. I, my advice is uh, buckle up, there's turbulence ahead. Speaker McCarthy tried to sweeten the short-term bill by including Republican priorities such as deep spending cuts and tougher border policies, but those additions make it almost impossible to pass in the Senate. The Senate is working on its own continuing resolution, which has broad bipartisan support to keep the government open for the next six weeks at current spending levels. Or we can shut the government down in exchange for a zero meaningful progress on policy. House Republican holdouts say the Senate bill won't work for them. We have members that say I'm not voting for CR under any circumstances, even if I agree with everything in it. And the two chambers are a long way apart. The White House is warning that a shutdown would impact all Americans. One example, TSA and air traffic controllers would have to work without pay. Look, they're pros and uh, they do what's required of them, just like our service members in uniform do. Uh, but uh, it certainly doesn't help with that safety critical job for them to come to work with the stress of not getting paid. The White House says that in previous shutdowns, there were significant delays and longer wait times for travelers at airports across the country. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. If an agreement is reached, of course, we'll be telling you on air and online.